Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll begin exploring the last inference rule that we need for propositional logic, which is disjunction elimination. This rule is employed when we see a disjunction. If we see the disjunction of two formulas as a single line, then if we open an assumption box for the left disjunct and we are able to conclude a formula, I'll use the Greek letter C, and if we are also open, able to open a second assumption box, and we begin that with the right disjunct, and then using a line of reasoning, we arrive at that same formula. Using disjunction elimination, we are able to conclude that formula. This Disjunction elimination is a strategy that uses forward reasoning. What we have is a disjunction. And then what we do is we open up two assumption boxes, one for the left and one for the right. These are written in natural deduction as being parallel, although we're going to linearize them and we're going to put them in sequence. We could choose either the left disjunct or the right disjunct to begin with, that won't matter for this rule. Um, and we then have to end at the same formula. And provided we do this, we can write it down. That's, that is the syntax. That's the mechanics. Here's the reasoning behind it. We know that one of these two formulas is true. Suppose, for the sake of argument, we begin with the left. We then use a line of reasoning, and we arrive at a formula. Alternatively, suppose that the right is true. We use a line of reasoning, and we arrive at the same formula. So whether we use, whether the left disjunct is true, or the right disjunct is true, we arrive at the same formula. Therefore, we're allowed to put that formula on its own line. Let's try a couple of examples. Let's begin with a sequent that is either p is false or q is true, therefore p implies q. And we begin this by writing down our premise, which is not p or q. The reason for that is that it is a premise. We write the conclusion which is P implies Q. And then we examine our premise, and the, the, for, the form of this is a disjunction. And so we could apply disjunction elimination. Let's stop for a moment and say, let's look at our conclusion. Our conclusion is P implies Q. So this has the structure of material implication, and we could open an implication introduction box. It doesn't matter which strategy we use. In both cases, there is a proof. I will choose to use backward reasoning first. In backward reasoning, I open an assumption box. I write the reason for the assumption box, which is I am using implication introduction. I write the antecedent as the first line of the box. It gets a line number. The formula is P. This is an assumption. I write the consequent as the last line of the box. This is Q. And I then look at this and say, what could I possibly do? And I look at my assumption and all of the preceding lines of my proof that are within scope. I see P 
P, I see not P or Q. If I use disjunction elimination, I would have one line of reasoning that starts with not P, one line of reasoning that starts with Q. If I start it with not P, I'm going to have a contradiction, and I can deduce any formula that makes it that makes my proof work. If I open this with Q, I'll actually achieve my goal. So it looks like disjunction elimination is going to be a fruitful strategy. Let's employ it. What we do is we open up two disjunction boxes. I don't know how long my proof will be, so I'll leave a little bit of room here. In the disjunction box, what we do is we copy the left disjunct into the top as its own line. So the left disjunct in this case is not P, and it gets line 3, and it's an assumption. I then write the, the goal formula. The goal formula is Q. I write that as the last line of the box. And because I've opened up assumption boxes here, I can already write my reasoning, which is I arrived at this by disjunction elimination. Now, what I see is I look at this new assumption and all of the lines that precede it that are within scope. Here, I see P is within scope, not P is on one line, P is on another line, I can use negation, elimination, to deduce the bottom symbol. So I will do that. So that's line 4, is bottom symbol. That comes from line 2, line 3, and negation, elimination. And then I can deduce anything that I want from the bottom symbol. And that is line 5 which is bottom elimination. I then have completed this box. So I then open up a new box. And this is, this is quite odd, because what I'll do is I'll open up a box, and then, so I open up a box, and I fill in the right disjunct as the top line of the new box, so that gets line 6, and that is Q, and that is an assumption. And then, under normal circumstances, I would write in the, the goal formula as the bottom line of this box. In this case, that turns out to be redundant because the assumption and the goal happen to be the same. So I don't need to write anything more in this box. I've already demonstrated by this assumption, I've demonstrated the goal formula. That means that I can now write the goal formula as its own line, line 7. And so that this reasoning for disjunction elimination we say this is the reasoning of lines 3 through 5, 3 through 5, and then this is a little odd. We say first and last line is 6, so that's 6-6 six six by disjunction elimination. And I've now completed the line number and the reasoning for the last line of this box. That means that this box is complete. I can now assign a line number to the goal formula, which is the conclusion, and that I arrived at in the reasoning that began at line 2 and ended at line 7. So 2 through 7 by implication introduction, and my proof is now complete. Now, let's try using disjunction elimination to prove the converse Suppose that what we want to do is we want to show that from P implies Q, we can deduce that either 
P is false or Q is true. We do this by beginning with writing down our premise, P implies Q, and that's a premise. And we write down the conclusion, which is not P or Q. And we then say from the premise, are there any rules that I can apply? And in this case, the premise is um, an implication, and without either a positive antecedent or a negative consequent, we can't apply any rules. For this, we could, it seems, try negation, uh, sorry, try disjunction introduction on either not P or on Q, but it's not immediately apparent how we're going to arrive at that either. And so, it would seem that we're stuck. Let's recall the rule of the law of excluded middle. Let's try introducing the law of excluded middle on the antecedent. That is, what I could do is I could write P or not P, and that is the law of excluded middle. And the law of excluded middle, we can recall, we can write at any time using any formula, and we could do that. We could have done an eight-line derivation. Instead, we'll simply write it. And the law of excluded middle is almost always immediately followed by disjunction elimination, because it is a disjunction. Let's try that. Let's try opening an assumption box for the first disjunct. And when we do this, we write the left disjunct as the first line of the assumption box. So that is 3. The left disjunct is P, and that is an assumption. We write the goal formula, which is not P or Q at, at the, as the last line of the box, and then we explore the assumption and all of the lines preceding it that are within scope and see what we can do. Here we have P. Here we have P or not P. That doesn't appear to be terribly fruitful. Here we have P and P implies Q. Oh, that means that I could immediately deduce Q. So let's try that. I could deduce Q, and that would be from line 3 and line 1 using implication elimination. I then take this new line and I compare it to my goal, which is the last line in my assumption box, and I see that they're related. If I apply disjunction introduction, I can convert Q into any formula disjoined with Q. And so, I will. That will be line 5, and that is from line 4 using disjunction introduction type 2. And now I've completed this assumption box. I then open an assumption box for the right disjunct of the law of excluded middle, and that right disjunct is not P, so I write down the line number, I write down not P, I observe that that's an assumption. I take my goal formula and I write that as the last line in the assumption box, which is not P or Q. I always begin by exploring the new assumption and every other line in the proof that is within scope. Here, I have to skip this entire box because it's outside scope. This is why some you will find that some people will write the boxes on the 
right side of the line numbers. I've chosen to write the boxes on the left side to make it clear that I'm not allowed to see those lines. They're, they're out of scope. So when I compare not P, I can't look inside that box. I can't use any line in that part of the proof. I have to skip the box and say, that, well, that's the disjunct, that's not terribly useful. And here, from not P and P implies Q, I can't seem to do anything particularly useful. I then take a look at my new assumption and my goal, and I say, oh, well, these are related as a disjunction. And so if I apply disjunction introduction type 1, I can go from my new assumption to my goal. So I do it. I then say that that is from line 6 using disjunction introduction type 1. I've now completed both of my assumption boxes. That means that this has been achieved. This is line 8. It was arrived at by the reasoning of lines 3 through 5, lines 6 through 7, and this was disjunction elimination. And my second proof is complete. What we've shown is referred to as an equivalence in logic. We've shown that if we begin with not P or Q, we can arrive at P implies Q. We've shown that if P material implies Q, we can arrive at not P or Q. Natural deduction doesn't let us do substitutions, but if we do arrive at an implication and a disjunction will prove to be more useful, we know that there's a proof that will take us there. And likewise, if we have a disjunction and we need an implication, we know that there's a proof that will take us there.